There we go. Wow, wow. Whoop de doo, Basil. Nice. Drop it. One of many that we will hopefully catch today. Not a big one, but a crappie nonetheless. I think there's probably gonna be some big ones out here. Hopefully. Get this hook out of here. You know, when people talk about power fishing, they often refer to that in, in they're talking about largemouth bass or smallmouth bass or muskies. But in fact, you can power fish for panfish and it can be very, very effective. Yeah, just nice pitching one. out. Yeah, it's a pretty nice one. It is, it is, it is, it is. Just casting out. Oh, yeah. Hello there, dude. Check that out. Whoa. Man, oh man. Man, oh man. Again, panfish, you know, just like any fish can be aggressive. So yeah, it's midsummer right now, and of course the fish are generally aggressive in warm water, but Panfish can be aggressive spring, summer, fall, winter. How many people have seen it when you're ice fishing, you get your bait down 10 feet and the school rushes up. So power fishing happens to be one of those techniques that's absolutely dynamite year round. Right now we're casting and vertically jigging some of these baits right here, which happens to be the Rapala Slab Wrap and it's catching slabs. Gee, that dude was mad. Just crushing? Yeah. He was really mad at that slab wrap. Wanted to put it in his belly. Nice. Yahoo! One last flippity flop of the croppity crop. Get this out of there. Wink. And wink. Every crappie's a good crappie in my book. You can't There's one. ever catch enough of those. Nice. Dun, Bingo. Dun, 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 dun. Bingo. Casting, huh? Yeah, casting. I'm kind of working this edge here. Seeing what we see, not a not a bad one. Nope. Just Either. flipping them in one after the other. Yeah, give me that one, Jer. Yeah. I will uh, put that one in the box for a little right. couple, little meal, like couple nice crappie sandwiches. Heck yeah! You know your electronics can tell you a ton about the mood of the fish. So, generally speaking, whether this is spring, summer, or fall, the further up in the water column that you see fish, the more aggressive they are. Now, we came through here with our with our electronics and just scanned around and we saw fish on the side imaging and we saw them on our 2D sonar and they were way up. I mean, these fish are in say 18 to 22 feet of water and the fish are down like 10, 11 feet. When they're like that, they're extremely aggressive and that's the time when you really want to power fish. This is when your hard baits, even jigs and plastics like a, you know, a grub or a paddle tail, something like that, but you can cast and wind. You don't have to sit in vertical fish fish like that. When they're, when they're up in the water column, the fish are absolutely active. <laughs> Rip, Ooh. and then, that's <laughs> oh, pretty a darn fun, man. Out here. We're catching a lot of fish, casting. Oh, this guy, hooks came out of him. Good. Goodness gracious. Gotta be careful. This poor dude. Sorry about that. Voila. Thousands of these fish out here. All different sizes. That's what's kind of fun when you're power fishing like this. Even those little fish are really aggressive and the big fish. All the fish seem to be pretty aggressive right now. And you never know what you're gonna catch on any cast or drop. It could be a 14 incher, it could be a nine inch eater. It doesn't matter. But the one thing that's interesting about power fishing, it doesn't work all the time. You have to see what the fish are doing generally if you drive across a, a flat or some deeper water like we're in right now and those fish are all real tight to the bottom, generally they're not that aggressive. When they're aggressive, those fish rise up off the bottom and are actively moving around. And it's, that's when you see those Christmas trees and stuff like that. It's very evident that the fish are hunting and that's the best time to 
power fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! Gooder? Yep. An eater! Definite eater. There's, there is a uh, blessing to catching some fish like this because they eat so well. You know, fish like this knife out pretty good and uh, I'm gonna throw this one in the box cool that one will cook up good you know talking about this power fishing I remember back it was a number of years ago Al and I were out west and we ended up catching some of the biggest panfish I've ever gotten in my entire life power fishing. And we kind of stumbled onto it by accident. Al was fishing up shallow. I was out uh, fishing off the back and I started marking stuff out in this nine, 10 foot of water. So I put on a one inch countdown rapala, threw it out the back, started, you know, he's fit casting up there and all of a sudden I'm like, bam, big giant bluegill. Bam, another big bluegill. Those fish are, uh, they can be just some of the most intense uh, fighters. Yeah, panfish can be super aggressive. Another time, Jeremy and I ended up getting on a topwater bite for bluegills, these giant bluegills coming up, blasting little rapple of poppers out of the water. I mean, those fish are, they're, they remind me of piranhas. They're just like, <laughs> they just wanna, they just wanna hit stuff like little bullies. So power fishing has a lot of different applications in the panfish world. And that applies to ice fishing too. When we go out looking for crappies, um, generally we go out and there's one guy in front. Oh, he's got one. Just another, another nice one. Sorry to interrupt you, Dan. That's all right. But to his point about how active these, these fish can be, you know, how many times have you been walleye fishing, caught a big crappie and a jig and a shiner, or even like when we're bass fishing, a lot of times we'll catch them on a, on a plastic worm, even bass jigs. And interestingly enough, uh, Tommy Scarless kind of broke some ground with some crappie tournaments, fishing crappies on boards with crankbaits. And it just goes to show you that the traditional thinking of catching panfish on minnows, wax worms, a cork, is not necessarily the best presentation. I mean, obviously it can work good, but often you can catch way more fish with an aggressive approach than you can fishing really slow and vertically. Yeah, that crappie tournament that Jeremy's talking about is no joke, man. That's like thousands and thousands of dollars. It's a it's a major, major tournament. And uh, it was traditionally won by guys with spider rigs off the back of the boat, just creeping along, doing that thing. And Tommy Scarless, whoa, um, broke so much new ground. He was taking offshore planer boards, going out there and just uh, combing the water and smoking these giant crappies. It's just totally shifted the whole makeup of the tournament. People fish differently because of those offshore planer boards and power fishing. Like I was saying, this um, power fishing applies to ice fishing also. When we go out and we're crappie fishing on the ice, we'll get one guy in front with the auger, another guy in the back with a good set of electronics, and he just powers holes and we just run, boom, look. Boom, look, no fish, no fish, no fish. All of a sudden you drop it down a hole and you'll see that Christmas tree. It's like, boom, that's where you want to start and then you rotate out from that. But either way, you're still power fishing, even though you're on the ice. There's one. There you go. Yep, there's another one. Whoa, hey. that's all right. You don't have to take the little treble hooks off. Yes. And it's, it's pretty interesting, even throughout, you know, the little bit that we've been out here, you might find that you count the bait out, say, to 10 to start with. Boom, you're cracking them on that, on that cast, you know, count down to 10. Then all of a sudden it slows down. You start going to 12, 15, you're counting the bait down, you start catching them. Then all of a sudden you're fishing at 15, you're not getting bit. You go back to 10 and you start catching them again. So those fish can really vary in the water column. And I always recommend just know how fast your bait falls and you want to make sure that you're fishing midway through the water column. A huge mistake a lot of anglers make is they're fishing below crappies. So if you're fishing below them, chances are you're not going to catch them. But if you're fishing above them, 
they'll come up and crack it. So you just want to make sure that you know where your bait's at in the water column and you'll get a feel for it the more you do it and it, it, uh, it makes all the difference in the world in how many fish you catch. It's a lot like muscle memory. You get uh, an area where you throw it out to, you count it down, boom, you catch a fish, you go right back out there and do it. And a lot of times you can just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. We're doing a little bit of both vertical fishing. If we get on, you know, a, a really dense school of fish, we'll drop the baits vertical and fishing. But when you're casting and retrieving the bait, one thing I found with crappies is that you almost want like a, a coast. You don't want the bait necessarily running in a straight line and you don't want to be fishing it really aggressively up and down. It's more like just kind of a pull and then you give it some managed slack so the bait falls because the crappies just love hitting baits on the fall. So what I'm doing is I'm counting it down then I'm kind of pulling it. I'll give it a little slack for just a second or so. Pull a little slack and what you'll see is a lot of times your line will jump you'll just feel that little tick and boom, game on. Like, oh, I just had one right there, just as I said that. God darn it. There's one. Got him. It is all about that retrieve. Almost every bite I've gotten today has been on that pause. It's not when you're, it's not when you're pulling it. It's when you're just letting up. So it's like the bait kind of, it's not, um, it's not like shooting up in the water, but it's probably just rising a little bit. And then it's a pretty steep, you know, I'm giving it enough slack. So it's not like falling like this. It's kind of falling nose down and then it comes up nose down. So it's just a nice, easy wave in the water. And it's on that slack that poop, you end up getting the bites. Now we got to get some big ones. I know there's some giants in this lake. That's the thing about these fish too, is that uh, you can often see that, um, you know, just because you're getting nine, 10, 11 inches, boom, boom, boom. You might think, oh, that's all that's here, but you just really never know. The next one could be one of those, one of those great big Kongs that are mixed in there as well. Ooh, that pushed slack in the line so hard that I thought I had nothing. It was unbelievable. It's a little, it's a little, little one. But he just was just ferocious. Oh, and underneath the boat too. Oh. Really? Did you see him on side imaging? Side imaging, yeah. Where, right where your bait's at is where there's a pile of them. That side imaging on the front of the boat, it, it, that's a game changer. You would have fished right by those fish oh, and not sure. even known it. You know, one thing is I've got, I've got this boat rigged up with a side imaging transducer on the bow and it's just unbelievable. I love it. But like Al and Jim both have 360 imaging transducers on, on their boats. And one of the advantages to that 360, you're still getting that picture off to the side, but they could actually see then in space where those fish are moving to. With side imaging, I can tell that the fish are there, but I don't have any reference to what direction they might be moving. But with 360 imaging, you can actually tell which direction those fish are moving and hunt the critters down. So it's, uh, oh it's amazing gosh. how powerful technology Whoa. is. And obviously they're moving back to the left because I've been casting up Jeez. here, nothing. Oh, that's a tanker. I thought that, that was thing. a, I thought that was a pike. That thing just about pulled the rod out of my hand. I'm like, this, just has, savages. this has to be a, a snake. Like no way, man. Pretty fish. Yeah. That's a nice fish. Yeah, I'll get the hooks out of here. Yeah, that uh, side imaging on the front and 360, it's a total, total game changer in fishing. Technology is just amazing nowadays. Every year it's like, how can it get any better? And every year it does. And you're like, how did, how did they think of that? <laughs> get this oh, yep. You got one? I found it. Just amazing. We saw that school on, three, uh, on uh, side imaging. We caught one right out here. I caught one here. Dan got one there. Boop. And now the, the school is moving, moving towards the back of the boat. So we just keep bombing our cast back this way. Here we go. Big boy. Feisty one. Okay, so I want to show you something here. This is, this is pretty critical to the spot that we're fishing right now. So believe it or not, this is actually the signature of a crappie. That's the signature of a crappie. But look at this. Do you see how off to the left here? See how it gets dark like that? So this is the transition from this is sand and gravel right here and then it turns into mud. So you can see the boat, we're about 20 feet, 25 feet onto the inside edge 
of the uh, of the sand. So we're up on top of the sand, but the fish are relating to this edge right Ooh. here. We get a little further up, we're not in the fish, but when we stay on that edge, bingo. Got one. Dan's got one. Whoa! <coughs> surprise, surprise. Gill, oh, nice gill. Yeah, another country heard from. Slab well, look rapper. at the size of that one, that's a tank. Yeah, it's a good one. Another country heard from. Yeah, look at that. Lippable bluegill. Nice bluegill. Catching all sorts of stuff out here. These dudes are power fishable also. Go get them, hot dog. It's always a good thing to name your lure at the beginning of a day. It gives you confidence in this glow-in-the-dark slab wrap I, I named Hot Dog. The one thing I've noticed fishing with this slab wrap, no matter how hard you pull it, it won't roll over. You know what I mean? Like some baits, if you pull them too hard, those little dainty baits like that, they'll spin out once you get over a certain speed. But this thing, I mean, you can rip it as hard or as fast as you want and it won't flake out on you, you know? So it's always running true no matter how hard you pulse it. There's and one. Uh, that's a big factor nice. with, with a micro bait like that. I mean, the other thing I like about fishing hard baits like this is you can see the water. I don't know what we got for visibility, maybe a couple feet, something like that. And it just makes the zone of awareness that much greater. Now, I'm not saying we couldn't come through here and we might, if the fish slow down, come back through here with jigs and plastics. We'll probably catch a number of fish doing that. However, this thing makes a little bit of noise with those hooks just banging off the side like that and that vibration they can certainly feel that on their lateral line like when you pull this bait you feel it in the rod you just know when it's working where a soft plastic or other baits you might not always know when that when that baits performing you always know when this baits running true so it's just a it's one of those things the fish certainly know it's there it works awesome in this dirtier water situation and a lot of the best panfish lakes in the summer are relatively dirty Another nice thing about this slab wrap is you can't fish it wrong. It's a no-brainer bait to fish. You know what I mean? You can cast it out there, let it sink to the bottom, and whoop, whoop, and the bait's always working. You could cast it out there and straight reel it in, and it's working. You know what I mean? The only way it's not working is if you don't have it in the water. There we go. Sometime. Whoa, 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 whoa. You got a big one? Looks like a crappie, too. Yeah, it looks like a crappie. Man, they just pull. These little shavers are just like, holy cow, man. I can't believe that thing just pulled the rod out of my hand. Look at that. Look at that. See how that fish was hooked? That slab wrap, a lot of times these fish are coming up there just slashing yep. at the bait, and those hooks are Gassing so sharp up. that the fish Gassing even marks. get near it, they get hooked. Crappity. Yep, just another nice one. Just another nice one. Pretty cool how well this produces casting, casting vertically. And now, if you're a tackle junkie like me, you've got lures for every different category, every possible fishing situation that you might encounter throughout the course of a season for just about everything that swims. However, if you're maybe just getting into fishing, you're maybe a little more selective on, hey, what should I, you know, what kind of lures should I buy? What should I have in my tackle box? And, you know, one thing about this particular bait is it's super versatile. You'll be able to catch this, I guarantee you, pre-spawn crappies when they're still out in that 8, 10 feet, they'll bite this thing. Bluegills bite it. You know what? It's a great ice fishing bait for perch, walleye, crappie, everything. So what I'm saying is a bait like this works spring, summer, fall, winter, it can be fished shallow, it can be fished deep, it can be cast, it can be fished vertical. So when you're looking at tools in your tackle box, you know, when you're building it, versatility is a really big element to making, you know, choices and in, in getting your lure collection built. And this happens to be one of them that catches everything and can be fished all season long in a number of different ways. You know, with any fishing situation, balanced tackle is paramount. And, uh, we fish with St. Croix and Daiwa gear and Suffolk's line, and they make some of the finest stuff in the world. 
Right now, both Dan and I happen to be fishing with St. Croix Legend Elite seven foot light extra fast action rod. Now this is a pretty spendy piece of equipment, but it also happens to be the nicest panfish rod on the planet. However, St. Croix does a great job of making quality products at a number of different price points. So this same rod with the power and action is available in their panfish series. And I'm telling you that is an exceptional rod for the price. And, and to go along with these, we've got, uh, in my case, I'm fishing with a Fuego LT. Dan has a Daiwa Procyon LT on the back. So these are light, tough reels. We've got the size 1000 here. Now I like the size 1000 uh, for this panfish setup. One, it's to me just a, a perfect size, but a little bit bigger spool as opposed to a 500 or 750 allows me a little more casting distance. It's a little better for line management. So I like that aspect of it. And also on here, we've got Suffix Nano Braid, the most incredible panfish line ever. You can see I've got this aqua camel. It's almost like a white color and it, it almost disappears in the water, but I can see it pretty good above the water. So it gives me those visual cues when I get bit. But the big advantage with this line is I can throw tiny baits. I'm talking 30 second of an ounce baits. I can cast them a mile. So it's really a dynamite combo that we've got, got set up. And you can get into the LT family and St. Croix panfish family for a reasonable price and be fishing with really great gear. There he is, boom. That was so cool. I just like, there's like 11 fish right out there and boom. Look at that. Not a giant fish, but hey, this has just been incredible action. We did catch a couple big ones. And I'm telling you what, you wanna have a good time, take advantage of summertime pan fishing, and leave the minnow bucket at home. Get some artificials like this, go out, cast, wind. I promise you're gonna have a lot of great fishing. And sometimes you get some real whoppers. Cool, this is awesome.